The MVP case for Zion is getting stronger, as the guy's beastly vertical, rebounding, and evolving IQ creates an extremely difficult situation to handle. Zion's fourth at his position in defensive rating and is averaging career highs in dimes, boards, steals, and free throw percentage. After taking down Phoenix, the Pels now own the first seed out west. They've won six consecutive, all without Brandon Ingram and mostly without Herb Jones. In the absence of Ingram, while Trey Murphy wasn't great in the game against the Suns, he's proved himself as a more than capable two-way weapon on the perimeter, quietly being the most efficient defensive small forward across the NBA. On an off night for Murphy, in the first of two games against the Suns, Najee Marshall stepped up with 14 off the bench, and CJ McCollum had an outstanding third quarter to help seal a dub for the Big Easy. Zion rubbed it in with a vicious 360 when he could have ran out the clock, maybe forming a rivalry with a fellow top-seeded opponent. We'll see how the Suns respond to that when these two teams meet up on Sunday. But the Pels are damn exciting right now and are proving their next up in the Western Conference. Before going in detail on New Orleans, just 10.9% of you watching are subscribed, so if a higher chunk of you were, that'd be dope. Leave a like for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter by clicking the links in the description. Back to the content. Zion definitely rubbed in the victory with a poster, but to be fair, he did call the Suns a great team three times in his interview courtside after the game, and in his post-game press conference said, quote, that was a little out of character for me, but you gotta understand, they sent my teammates home last year, end quote. You can't help but respect that take. And against an elite wing defender in Mikhail Bridges, Zion just displayed he's one of the top slashers in the world by dropping a season best 35 on 13 of 17 field goals made while being a game best by far plus 30 and posting an 83.03 true shooting clip. Zion's momentum shifting passion for the game and once in a generation type agility for his size is damn fun to watch. Zion's combo of brute strength, soaring verticality, quick twitch first step off the bounce, and finesse allow him to dominate in breathtaking fashion. His past five outings have seen him average 30 points, nine boards, and five dimes on 68.4% shooting from the field. He's the best player on the best team in the West right now. Zion's rim pressure and all-around forcefulness, whether it's slashing or controlling the glass, causes severe problems for any opposing scouting report to both game plan for and match up with. Let's look at how the Pell's number one option gets it done without the need for a deep range shot or even a jump shot at all. Zion is outstanding at gathering momentum off the dribble and exploding from well beyond the basket for beastly attacks. On this mean finish through a big who's strong in his own right, you can tell by Landale's facial expression afterwards that he got straight up bodied out of the way. Trying to guard that doesn't seem like any fun. Zion gives him the too little selly, which is crazy considering Landale's 255. While Zion has a 30 pound advantage over Jock, the way he utilizes that weight is pretty mind blowing. Under talked about with this man is the skill that he has working off the dribble and also his ambidextrous finishing around the cup. He can't pull up like Steph, but as Bridges does right here, you still have to stay tightly attached to Zion to keep him from gaining a full head of steam. A triple threat move where he jabs in three directions, one hezzy dribble, and a fake drive entry on a between the legs cross to his left is followed by the actual momentum cross to his off-handed right. Bridges stays right there, but watch the body control to duck underneath him and also split the stunt and recovery from Tory Craig. Watch him sprint down the court right here, beating all five sons up the court in transition. Credit to Nance Jr. for pushing the tempo. Credit to Najee Marshall for the lob pass. Beastly finish. Knowing he's got a serious strength advantage over Bridges, purely a signature size up, leads into another off-handed momentum, and this is straight lethal force as Zion first puts a shoulder into Bridges, then when Mikhail recovers at the last second, he bodies him off for a second time. Zion blitzes the passing lane, three push-ahead dribbles take up the entire 92 feet, and you have to love the ability to rip through Cameron Payne at 100 miles per hour. Williamson has incredible dexterity as displayed on yet another size up. Instead of repeating that combo like he did on prior possessions to shed defenders, he unpredictably just goes right into his drive, fooling the Suns defense, and Booker makes a very wise choice by stepping out of the way. What a night and what a talent in his prime that we should all be appreciating, whether you're a Pelicans fan or not.
Aside from the contributions of Zion, New Orleans incredibly being at the top of the West without a near 50-40-90 player and two-time All-Star in Brandon comes down to a couple standout factors. Firstly, the amount of top options they have on the wing. This roster is composed of mobile combo forwards who can space the floor out for you and guard positions 1 through 5. Not only Trey Murphy, but Najee Marshall and Dyson Daniels, the rookie, can also lock up the opposing team's best player on any given night and are solid 3 and D weapons that get overlooked. But in terms of Trey Murphy, the kind of statistical progression that he's made in his sophomore season is precisely what a franchise and fan base want to see from their first round pick. Murphy's numbers in comparison to his rookie campaign have skyrocketed as he's improved his point per game average by over 8, plus his field goal and 3 point efficiency by around 9 and 3 percentage points respectively. Trey's help defense is exceptional as he rotates to Zach Levine on this baseline spin move attempt in transition, stuffs him clean, takes it coast to coast the other way, and watch how he just attacks Vucevic for the poster with no hesitation. I love that. He's also great at making off-ball reads and being pesky in the passing lanes, defending the backside. This play sees him leave Pat Williams alone to shock Vucevic for the steal. Ayo Dosumu's baited into thinking there's an open lane before he gets ripped right here, stunning off Dosumu on the weak side. Again, he baits a Bulls player to make an errant decision, as sagging off that far makes Nikola assume Ayo's open, but the active hands and 7-foot wingspan of Trey get him yet another swipe. There's plenty of depth, and a lot of players on the Pelicans deserve their flowers, but in terms of the most important supporting cast members around Zion, we'll stick to covering Jose Alvarado, Larry Nance Jr., and Jonas Valanciunas for today's video. It's a shame JV isn't known as being a top 10-15 to 15 center in the game. I still think he's underrated, despite not being that versatile. Strictly in terms of the post, his offense and defense down low are pretty solid. Jonas has posted the 15th most amount of double-doubles, and he's 9th in screen assists. Man's a consistent beast down there, who's constantly keeping possessions alive and doing the unnoticed dirty work. Jose Alvarado's become one of the fastest players to keep in check off the dribble in the game of basketball. In the absence of Ingram, whenever Zion's gotten double teamed or just needs an outlet, Jose's always there to penetrate and either get fouled, find an open teammate, or finish off the play with good strength for his undersized frame. Despite being just 6 foot 180, Alvarado's a tough finisher around the basket who can fend off big bodies, draw contact, and finish through the traffic. Whether it's that shock-creating toughness, or the internet trending sneak up on you defensive tactic, Grand Theft Alvarado instantly makes things happen when he checks in. When you check out the plus-minus stats, New Orleans is outscoring opponents by more points when Alvarado's on the floor in comparison to when Williamson is. At just 24, the product of Georgia Tech may have more potential than we think. Just look at Jose's numbers through the first four games of this month. 19 points, 2 steals, 3 dimes on a 51-54-81 shooting split. That's all-star caliber efficiency. Then you've got Larry Nance Jr., who's this team's crunch time center, meaning when other teams go small down the stretch, Valanchunas comes off and Nance Jr. replaces him as the five-man. Ever since Nance Jr. was in Cleveland, I've always appreciated the springiness and versatility that he brings to the table. In the W against Phoenix, Larry was flying all over the court like the typical hustle beast that he is, ultimately stuffing the stat sheet, as in 24 minutes, he posted 17 points, was a plus 11, which was a team third best. He also racked up 9 boards, 5 times, 4 steals, and a block. Nance Jr. is one of a staggering 9 players on the Pelicans roster to be averaging at least 7.6 points per game. I can't lie, I wish my Raptors had that kind of depth. But for today's question, were you a fan of Zion rubbing it in at the end? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top 5 commentors by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's speaks winner is JJD who says, Grant in my opinion is a top 10 role player in the NBA. The fact that he's able to guard some of the best players in basketball very effectively at his height is just unbelievable. He's also able to come up clutch in many situations, for example when he scored 25 points in Game 7 versus Milwaukee last season. Thanks for watching, have a good one.